So I had a trial in Los Angeles against Vivka Gray, uh, an ex-girlfriend who dogpiled on my ex's hoax, and I won. This video is a report on what happened at the trial. Everything I'm about to say has receipts. What you'll see on screen are quotes from the official court transcript, and you'll also see video footage of Viv caught lying during deposition. This was a civil trial in LA, meaning I sued Viv for defamation, that is, for not telling the truth, and then she countersued for defamation, saying the same thing about me. The two ca cases were uh, combined into one. Me and Viv have been going through this for about three years now. Uh, she easily could have gained a leverage over me by filing criminal charges after I sued her, but she knew that wouldn't fly because she's lying. The trial itself went on for over a week. Nobody came to support Viv. Uh, and besides my ex, Viv had no witnesses except for two of her ex-boyfriends that I'd never met. It was very strange. Viv is out on social media claiming this is a huge trauma and everyone should support her, and literally not a single person in Los Angeles could be bothered to show up and sit on her side of the gallery over a week in trial. I do want to say I appreciate very much the folks who came out to support me at trial and especially the people who took the risk of testifying, and hopefully they all know that. Anyway, everybody says it's almost impossible to win a defamation trial in the U.S., but we did. However, uh, there were some strange impediments to what we could do at trial. Uh, the judge put a time limit on how long we could go. I've heard from other lawyers this is semi-normal. Our side was meant to go first, which is also normal. So that meant that our witnesses went before Viv's witnesses. Now this next part is weird, and lawyers have told me that it's weird, like other lawyers besides mine after the fact. The point all of our witnesses were making, like Sarah, Frankie, Michelle, people who had lived with us um, in me, uh, was that Mandy and Viv weren't honest or reliable people. Their testimony couldn't be trusted. Um, however, in the middle of the trial, I was explaining how Mandy was mentally deteriorating, and the judge interrupted and basically said, she said that you can't impeach a witness's honesty, I believe, before they've testified, um, which was obviously put us in a weird position. Are everybody on our side was going first for the most part. Um, and that meant that a lot of what my witnesses were saying was just discounted because it was before the person that they were describing. Every, the other people have told me, uh, including lawyers, that I could have appealed the whole trial on this basis, but we did win. So that would have been weird to spend all that time and effort to appeal a trial that you won. Even discounting our witnesses, Viv and Mandy's emails and Facebook messages and stuff proved they weren't telling the truth pretty much immediately. For example, Viv and Mandy's claim that I forced Viv to move in with us somehow. We had lots of emails and other communications proving both that she was enthusiastic about the whole thing, including she completely redecorated the living room after she moved in, and Viv moved in while Mandy and I were in Montreal, so we weren't even in LA when she was moving into our house, so we couldn't have forced her to do anything. Mandy and Viv's testimony was a total shit show. They couldn't agree with each other. Mandy admitted to perjury on the stand, and her own lawyer fired her, so she had to get a new one. And Mandy and Viv also made a number of contradictions with themselves in their own testimony. This is all from the record. My ex said that you shouldn't believe Michelle's testimony because, quote, She's a stripper, they all lie. And then immediately admitted that yes, both she and Viv, that is Mandy, my ex, and Viv, were also, had both been strippers. Although Mandy had testified under oath that every single thing Viv said was something she knew to be true, when she was cross-examined, she started to admit that actually a lot of these things Mandy herself admitted she hadn't heard me say or seen me do firsthand. She was just saying that she heard from Viv that this had happened and so believed it and repeated it. So her testimony completely changed. 
Mandy also admitted to destroying evidence uh, where she and Viv were discussing what they would say before the trial. They also, Mandy and Viv, completely disagreed about whether they ever had sex. Uh, Mandy, very strangely, is claiming that this girlfriend that she went out, out with from September until the spring and who lived with her and who she called her girlfriend, she claims she never had sex with Viv. And Viv says straight up several times that she had sex with me and Mandy. You would think this by itself would pretty much impeach them as witnesses. Again, although Viv claimed under oath that she, I had pressured her to have sex with people and made them have made her have sex with other men, that turned she they dialed that back. They between the two of them, they basically dialed back every damning statement they made in one way or another. Viv claimed weirdly, and I don't know why, that I forced her to use sex toys and she didn't like it, and then admits that, yeah, she was texting me about, you know, how excited she was to get new batteries to masturbate with her sex toy. Mandy clearly stated multiple times that Mandy herself initiated every single time I had sex with her, and that our sexual encounters always ended when Mandy had an orgasm. Nobody has been able to explain how this fits with the rest of Mandy's story. People from the game industry may remember that Mandy claimed I wrote a Tumblr post in her name uh, that was defending me. Mandy admitted that wasn't true. Again, old news for a lot of people, but Mandy did admit to punching me, and we weren't in an argument when she did it. Her excuse was that she was drunk. And Viv admitted that the tattoo of her name that I got on my arm was her idea despite all of her claims that somehow me calling her her girlfriend or being like, I love you after we went out for seven months or whatever was somehow too fast or rushed or weird. Viv's post also made hay, made a lot of claims about how I was like an objectifying person and was always talking about, was always talking about boobs. Well, I mean, I could just show you the video evidence there. Mandy's breasts were constantly brought up. In our relationship, boobs was such a constant topic. You yourself mentioned how much you liked Mandy's boobs, right? Well, again, the conversation of boobs and breast size was talked about so much that, of course, I would also talk about it with them, if it is a subject that is constantly brought up. Who constantly brought them up? You? Uh, Zach brought them up a lot. Oh, lame. My mom never had them. And now I My mom didn't have them until she got older. And then I was giving her bras. I didn't Come on, Zach, give it to me. Come on. Yeah, you're right, guys. I really took a load off my chest. <laughs> Sorry that I took that way in. And the they other look one in the over last here. room, these look all snaky. Yeah. Ah, oh, God, they're it's all, all connected. <laughs> I thought they were curvy like a woman. I thought so too, really, when I saw I thought they were just It's lame. easy to distract. <laughs> it's not modern enough. Like, oh, Colin looks like he took some ass. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. It's 14 or higher for your. Oh my God. <sighs> no, look at the front. Oh my god! Too big for my taste. Mm -hmm. I, I like big girls. <laughs> yes, this piece is heavy. Right <laughs> my yeah. girlfriend. She's a, she's a yeah, she yeah. is. I like I like her uh, studded ornate nipples. Yep. The big ice lady. I think we're gonna have a frost it's kinda like princess a princess battle. Frost hot. princess battle. So naked hot epic. <laughs> in the <laughs> snow. <laughs> snow glittering her yeah. nipples. So, okay, it's your half of the initiative, ladies. So, I get under, you're if I raging. Get under five hit points, I take off my top and I just wear a bikini. Do it, do it. No! If you get under five hit points. Listen to you, pervert. <laughs> okay. You know, that's a really good idea. Alright, um, so you're raging? Yes. Smush. Ah. Feel, feel, feel my. Yeah, that's. <laughs> 
like legs splay <laughs> and boob out, and it's just like, oh, these old things? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, she's searching and looking at her traps, and I'm, <laughs> I'm rolling <laughs> And we're also searching the car. In my contract at work, you know, you, you know, you're not allowed to like fondle your breasts or put things in your vagina. Yeah. But and then like also, you're not allowed to commit acts of bestiality on the stage or uh, so scat sad. scatological play. The <laughs> scatological <laughs> scat. It's like thinking about scat. Uh, that's illegal. Thinking no poop play on know. the stage. The, the not being able to fondle your own boobs thing is really it's, it's me so a lot. Hard. The the porn version of this. It's not I hit it with my axe or <laughs> it's I, hit it, I hit it with my pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to roll the dice as we're getting real. I can hit you in the face with my tits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're closer to the table and you're. Can you see where you are? Yeah. You don't get any closer to the Yeah, you want to clean the joint. Yeah. Can you see me? Yeah. Look at that nice those frame. Things. There's a dead box. There's a dead box. So just be, I mean, it doesn't matter that much, but be slightly conscious when you do this, or like drawing and over here, you it on the head. Yeah, are you put it on the bedroom bra. Like, I can wear it like a nice huge hat. Oh. We, we, we never out. saw it in the, uh, in the other No, movie. but we, we talked, talked about, about it and some dude lost his shit because every single time we said the word, he would laugh so hard that he was going to throw up. Nice. Alright. Wait, wait, it? I can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Wait, no. Yeah, you know, you're always like, I can't wear that shirt. It's all stretched out. <laughs> this one needs to be stretched out. <laughs> okay. I like how. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think I, I don't even think I need to say how excited I am about this room. <laughs> I, I confirmed multiple times before that yes, this, I I wanted boobs. I've. I wanted them before I even knew Zach and Mandy. My main focus wasn't getting a big cash reward, it was clearing my name. Because the time limit, we spent all our time focused on proving what Viv says wasn't true, not talking about money. As a result, the judge wasn't convinced that Viv, who had dogpiled a few days after Mandy's original statement, did any damage that Mandy hadn't already done. The net result was that the cash award wasn't huge, but Viv, as the loser, still had to pay the, all the court fees, which are pretty substantial. This also gets weird. Viv is now trying to plead poverty and get money from her fans to pay these fees, despite the fact that Viv repeatedly testified in court that she made $30,000 per month, or maybe a little less, on OnlyFans. She might have been lying. Viv has consistently sold her content online by claiming she was in the top whatever percent of creators on OnlyFans. And maybe she lied in court because she wanted to keep up this illusion. Uh, or maybe she just spent it all on a house or lost it on crypto. I don't know. Maybe she never had that much money and was hoping I'd bribe her to shut up. I don't know. At any rate, it's weird. Of course, she's also trying to claim I didn't win in any real way and that her lying about being kidnapped or whatever isn't a big deal. She tried to spin this in a lot of ways, uh, including following the lead of an anonymous 4chan guy named Skirples, uh, claiming there was some kind of sanction against my lawyer and that this was a massively important thing. So what really happened was Mandy, my ex, was supposed to give a deposition, which is like pre-trial testimony over video chat. I asked my lawyer and according to him, anyone can sit in on a deposition. Uh, I asked some of Mandy's other victims if they wanted to be there. Uh, two women wanted to be present, her closest friends slash girlfriends from the time, uh, Charlotte Stokely and Michelle Ford. So if she said anything that wasn't true during the deposition that they could recognize, they'd be in a position to spot it and help us ask questions around it. So they were there to help. Uh, there's no rule that says you can't do this. Um, it, Eventually, my lawyer had to quote California Civil Procedure Before Trial, Volume 2, Chapter 8, Section 8, colon 698. Quote, absent a protective order, non-parties may attend a deposition. Indeed, it may be necessary or efficient to have a non-party attend. Viv's lawyer just said she didn't get enough notice before this happened, and if she had, Maybe she wanted to file a protective order because Mandy was claiming to be like traumatized by having to see on the screen that two of her victims were listening in. 
they stopped the deposition. Uh, Viv's lawyer filed something to say, hey, uh, we don't want to do this with these people present. Uh, my lawyer and I figured it wasn't that important to waste that much time, effort, money, whatever, to fight this and just have another deposition later without them. The judge then did what I've seen the judge do several times, which is make one of the two lawyers pay a fee for spending the court's time on something that didn't work. So basically, a bunch of people had to show up to the video chat, stenographer, videographer, whatever, and then the deposition didn't happen. So she said to my lawyer, hey, you pay a fee. She has done the same thing to Viv's lawyer in different situations when Viv's lawyer missed a deadline or screwed something up. It's not some huge traumatic thing. And it had nothing to do with me or Charlotte or Michelle, despite Viv and the 4chan guy trying to make it into some kind of hidden smoking gun. So yeah, that's the story of the trial. And that's why if you hear Mandy or Viv say anything, you probably shouldn't believe it.